Hi everyone, this is Charlie Roshke from Roshke Designs, and today we're going to be looking at a basic guide for ETC EOS software. We'll be using ETC Nomad today. So the first step we're going to want to take is go ahead and create a new show file. So we're going to click here in the central information area, or the CIA. We're going to click File, and then we're going to get a drop-down menu. We're going to double-click New. And we're going to say, OK, we really want to do create a new show. And now we have a totally new show that we can go ahead and use. So the first thing we're going to want to do is uh, learn about patching. So if we're going to go over here, we can open patch two ways. We can either click display and then the soft key three for patch, or we can go over here, click this little plus button down here and go over to tab 12 and click patch. Perfect. Now we are in patch. I'm actually going to resize this so you can see patch a little better. That's a little better. Now, if you notice, patch is organized by columns. We have the channel column, which remember is our virtual address that we use for organization. We have the address column, which is the hard number of the fixture. And we have the type. Uh, and this type is basically the mode of the fixture. Is it a dimmer? Is it what type of intelligent fixture is it? Then we can also label and do a couple other things over here that you don't need to worry about just yet. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to look at is how to do is how to patch a conventional fixture. And basically, all the syntax is, is the channel number you desire, right over here. Then at the address number you want, and then enter. So to look at that, let's say we wanted channel number 1 to be at. And if you look down here at our little command line feedback, you're going to see it'll assume channel. Then at turns into address. So at or address, and then let's go ahead and put it at address six. We're gonna hit enter. And then you'll notice, we've gone ahead and patched a fixture. Channel one is at address six. Now, if you wanted to patch address then channel, you can go ahead and click this little format button. And that just puts address in the first column. So now the syntax would be the address you want. Let's say we want address five. And then the channel you want at and look again, if we go down here to our command line feedback, we'll see that those are reversed. Let's say we want that at channel two. And then we're gonna click enter. Perfect. I prefer to work with channel address, but it's all about your personal preference. So that's patching a conventional fixture. But if we wanna patch something like an intelligent fixture, here are the steps for that. We're gonna go ahead and select the things you wanna patch. So let's go ahead and say three, or channel three. And then I'm gonna click enter. And that's going to go and select that channel for me. And then I'm going to click this type button right here. And you notice we get to a totally new display. You have show, which is just anything you've already patched in your show. You can sort by manufacturer, or you can search. We're going to go ahead and search for some elation platinum spot 5R pros. And then right down here, we're going to click this little drop down menu, and you'll see we get the different modes of the fixture. We're gonna go ahead and double click standard. And then once we've added a type, we can just go ahead and say channel three at address. And we just have to type in the starting address. Even though intelligent fixtures take up multiple, the console will autofill. Let's say our starting address was 60. We're gonna click enter and there we go. We've already patched in an intelligent fixture. Now, let's say we wanted to patch in multiple fixtures. That's totally, that's totally fine. We can use these AND and THROUGH buttons. THROUGH just means it'll take a sequence. One through five. It'll patch all of those. AND would mean one AND five. And I use this little plus button for that. We're going to go ahead and use THROUGH. So let's go ahead and patch channels 10 through 15. And then I'm going to click ENTER. And then I'm going to want these guys to be, let's do some Chauve Colorado Quad Zoom Tour. And let's go ahead and pick TR16 mode. That's perfect. Now I can go ahead and type in the starting address of my very first fixture. Let's say at 100 and it'll actually auto-populate all the way down, which is really, really cool. Now, I want to patch just one more conventional fixture. So I'm going to do that in channel 4. And the way I'm going to do that is this fixture, let's say it's in our second universe. 
and where universe is just 512 channels of DMX. So I'm gonna pick four, at, and then I'm gonna select the universe number two, backslash the address I want it to be, which is eight. Enter. And you'll notice we've now patched that in the second universe. Perfect. Now let's go back to live. We can go and click this live button right here. That means we can edit things in live and we'll see them happen on stage. So we need to learn how to bring up fixtures. So the best way to do that is with your command line. So we're going to go ahead and say one, channel one, and it'll assume channel down here in our command line. Then we're going to click at and then assign a value to it, an intensity value. Let's say we want it at 50. We'll type in 50 or the ETC ION or Express, uh, excuse me, not Express or Geo or whatever you're using that has EOS software uh, can actually use just the 5. So if I were to do 2, channel 2 at 5, it'll assume I mean 50. If I wanted that to be at actual 5, I could type 0, 5. Pretty cool, huh? Now, let's say I wanted to bring up multiple fixtures. So I can go ahead or take, or bring up multiple fixtures. Let's go ahead and select one through three. Remember that through button takes a sequence, then at six, which assumes 60, and then enter. Perfect. Now those three channels are at 60. Now, we can also look over here, and mm, now I wanna bring up 10, through 15, but I don't want to bring up channel 12. There are a couple ways I can do that. I can use my plus and my minus sign. Now, the first way we can do is select channel 10 through 15 minus channel 12, and then I can use this full key over here to bring something to 100%, so I can click at full, enter. Perfect, now I've brought everything but 12 to full. Now, another way to do that is to just go 10 through 11 and 13 through 15. Let's say I want to bring them at 65. Enter. Pretty cool. Now, a clever little hotkey here is if you double tap full when your channels are selected, you can actually bring it to full and it'll self terminate, which means you don't need to press enter. And then speaking of self-terminating, there's one key on here that doesn't that is self-terminating, and that's out. Out just takes your fixture values to zero. So for instance, now I have 10 through 15 selected. I can go ahead and click out. I don't need to press enter, but if you'll notice, all the values have gone to zero, which can be a really handy tool. Now I've done a lot here, and I kind of want to reset. I can use this go to cube button. I can hit go to cube out and in this case I do need to hit enter and it'll take out all of my values in my programmer which can be a really great way to reset yourself. So we've looked at how to bring up intensity but we've patched some intelligent fixtures and they have a lot of different parameters to look at. So for that we need to go to ML controls. M ML controls you just press this little plus button and they're right over here they're tab 5. Now ML control stands for moving light controls. You can use moving light controls, or you can use the encoders on your console to go ahead and access these intelligent parameters. Let's go ahead and select uh, channel 10. Perfect. Now look, I've got all of these parameters available for us to choose from. Hmm, now what to choose? Uh, let's go ahead and let's bring it up so we can bring up the intensity. But rather than doing that here, we can go ahead and use this scroll wheel over here to bring it up. Now, let's say this is taking too long to get to full. I can go ahead and click max, and that'll take me to the max value of that parameter, or min will take it to the minimum value. Let's go ahead and max it out so it's at 100%. I can use this thing over here called a color picker. This automatically mixes the color on the fixture for me so I can get whatever color I want. Now, I can use the color picker on the ML controls, or I can press the plus button again and go over here and grab a color picker. And then I can go ahead and use the color picker here. I'll use the one in the ML controls and I'll go ahead and select a nice deep blue. Perfect. I can also mix with these wheels over here if I wanted more precise mixing. And I can also, let me go ahead and zoom this fixture out a little bit. That's perfect. So that's a little way of how, of how we can edit uh, in, uh, intelligent parameters. 
Now I've done some work with channel 10 here, but um, I think I also want to bring up a couple other things. I want to do one through four, but I don't want that moving light. So I'll hit minus three and then I'll click at eight and that assumes 80, enter. And this is pretty good. I like this look on stage. This is what I want it to be. I can go ahead and record this as a cue. Now how I can do this is hitting record cue, the cue number I want. Let's go ahead and say one, enter. Perfect. And now I've recorded a cue. Now if you'll notice, this cue goes into something called a cue list. If I hit this plus button again, I can go over to the cue list tab, which is right over here, tab 16. Perfect. And now you'll notice I have a cue list here. But let's say I wanted another one. To do that, all I would do is select the cue list number I wanted. So two, and then backslash the first cue, which would be one. And then I'm just going to hit enter. And then I'm going to confirm, click enter again. And now I've created another cue list for me to use. Cue lists are just ways of organizing and storing different sets of cues. But let's say I wanted to make Q2 the master cue list. What I could do is go ahead and say, again, two, which is my cue list number, backslash one. And then I'm gonna click load and then go. And that's gonna switch over the master. So really quick, I'm just gonna switch back to Q1 backslash one. And we're gonna hit load. Excuse me, load, go. Perfect, and we switch back to our master. Now we're gonna go back to live. And now that I have this cue, I want to make another cue. I want to make another look on stage. So let's say I want to bring in 10 through 15. And let's bring them at full this time. And I'm gonna go over here to my moving light controls. And I want to put them in green now. And I think this is pretty good. I think this is what I want it to be. What I can go ahead and do is hit record cue two. And now I have my next cue. And we can check on this by clicking our plus button again and then going to something called the PSD list, which is tab two. This is our playback display. Perfect. Now, what we can see is we have our cues and our cue list listed here. So if I were to go back, we can see the time it takes to fade from cue two, one to two is five seconds. And you can see that execute right over here. Now, that's a little too long for me. I can go ahead and change that by clicking Q2 time three. And that's gonna set it to three seconds. Now, if we were to go back, we can see the fade time will be, go, three seconds. Perfect, that's looking really good for me. But I actually think I want my moving light up in Q2. I can go ahead and edit, that's totally okay. We're gonna go back to live over here. We go ahead and select my moving light and I'll bring it, let's bring it at full by clicking, double clicking, full. If I go to my moving light controls, let's put it in a red and let's go ahead and let's add a gobo to it. Let's add this gobo over here. That's perfect. Now, but I want to change this into Q2. That's no problem. When we're editing, we have to make sure we're in the queue we want to edit and then we just click update and then enter. And that will go ahead and update our queue for us, which is really, really handy. Perfect. So I think that's the queue I want. Let me go ahead and record one more queue. I think I'm gonna take 10 through 15 and take them out. And then I'm gonna record queue three, enter. Now there's one other cool thing we can talk about when we're talking about queues, and that is called an auto follow. Auto follow just means once a queue begins to execute, the next cue of the sequence will immediately start executing two, depending on the time you give it. So let's go ahead and say cue two, then I'm gonna click this over here, which is follow hang. I'm gonna click it once for follow, and then I'm gonna choose the time I want it to follow. So the follow time starts right when the cue starts executing. So I want it to follow after four seconds. I'm gonna click enter. And then you'll notice we'll get a little arrow by three over here. So if I were to go back, and I were to go, go back to Q1, and I were to go, click go to Q3, Q2, we're gonna see that we have two countdowns. And then right after four seconds finishes, Q3 begins to execute automatically. That's a really, really cool tool for us to be able to use. Now, to play back cues, we can use 
the go button and the back button. The back button has an automatic timing, but the go button respects the timings you've set. But let's say you're going to a queue, but you didn't mean to. If you were in the middle of transitioning and hit the back button, you'll actually pause the queue. On, to resume it, you can either hit back or to hit go. We'll hit back in this case. Another way to play back queues is with this go to queue button. Now let's say instead I don't want to hit go twice to go to queue three, I can just hit go to queue three, enter, and it'll go ahead and take me to queue three. This also does not respect the timings you set. So one more thing we want to look at is submasters. So a submaster is uh, a really a way for us to be able to play with faders. So to record a submaster, I'm going to set a look I want. So let's say I want one through 15, I want them at full, and then I want 10 through 15, select them, put them, I don't know, let's say in a red. How about that? And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty good for me. I want to record this as sub number one. Perfect. Now if I were to go to my faders page, which is, again, you can click plus, and I can go ahead and click sub one, and then I'll click enter, and then all I have to do over here is just click this button, which is load, and now you'll notice sub one has been loaded onto this first fader for me to use and play back. And then lastly, something that's really important is saving your show. And there's a couple ways to do this. You can either go to your central information area, go under file and click double click save. I can go ahead and say, yes, I really want to save. And then because this is the first time we're saving it, it's going to want us to name it. And let's call it test underscore 2021. And click enter. And our show is saved. Another way to save our show is to click shift and then update. And that's a really fast hotkey for saving your show. And this has been a basic guide to ETC EOS software. Thank you so much.